Welcome to this channel. In this YouTube, I would like to share with you a very important topic. And that topic is heart rate variability measurement for Kung Fu and Qigong training. So in the previous YouTube, I have uh, shared with you the K criteria. Heart rate variability is a part of uh, K criteria. Heart rate variability or HRV measurement is needed for mapping ancient Chinese Kung Fu or Qigong training in sports science. This is important because heart rate variability measurement help us to quantize our training. Heart rate variability measurement is used in these two areas. The heart rate variability measurement is used in recovery and qigong training. And also heart rate variability measurement is used for knowing one's limitations and style to select. So let's get uh, into details of this thing. Heart rate variability measurement used in recovery and Qigong training. So if we look into the H model or the Chinese Kung Fu training models, which is uh, presented in details in my book Wing Chun Inceptions, Heart rate variability is here, okay? It is uh, under the training goals of uh, warm up, cool down, deep recovery. And uh, that related to the physiological state of Sing Qi, Nurture Qi, Quiet Mind, and Natural Deep Breathing. <coughs> so, in terms of recovery, we can monitor the heart rate variability to know where we are. In terms of the uh, Qigong, we can uh, monitor the heart rate variability to see if we train effectively and uh, our physiological states. So as uh, in the uh, Wing Chun Inception, it shows here, uh, this is the heart rate variability, okay, which is the uh, RMSSD. Uh, this is before the Qigong training, and this is after. So before the Qigong training is... Uh, 22.4 and after the training is 29.9 so we know that the Qigong uh, training is effective and also we can know our state of uh, our physiologic so uh, that is where the heart rate Variability measurement is used in terms of recovery and uh, Qigong training. For the uh, heart rate variability measurement used for knowing one limitations and style to select. Again, this is one page of the uh, book Wing Chun Inception. So it is just here. It is well known in traditional Chinese martial art culture that high intensity type of training is not suitable for those who are older than 40 years old. It is also well known in Chinese martial art history record that this degree of martial art practice could cause internal organ damage or illness. 
And here it says that as in chapter 2, scientifically it is known that age is one of the factors that influence heart rate variability values. Lower heart rate variability generally indicates an increased biological age or older. Higher heart rate variability is correlated with increased fitness, health, and youthfulness. People who have high heart rate variability may have greater cardiovascular fitness and more resilience to stress. Thus, aging is an important factor to be considered setting a proper intensity of training. So, furthermore, as shown in figure 4.4, often monitors of HRV, okay, which is uh, the root mean square of successive difference, is a good way to learn about one's fitness condition. And uh, here it says that in the traditional Chinese martial art culture, soft and gradual type of training in zone 3 or under are known to be suitable for those who are older than 40 years old. This type of training is named as soft style. Furthermore, for those who is weak or sick, zone 3 or under is the training zone suitable for them. So, with the measurement of the uh, heart rate variability, We know where we need to train in so that uh, we get result and not uh, causing a problem with our health. Okay. So uh, again, with the heart rate variability measurement, we can uh, monitor uh, are we recover or are we recovering and also our uh, qigong training and also we know what type of training we need to have or need to select because uh, we know our limitations so that is why uh, heart rate variability measurement is very uh, important for, uh, for, for, for Kung Fu training. That's why it is in the H model here. Okay. Now, over here we talk about the RMSSD. RMSSD is a common measurement of heart rate variability. So uh, in today's market, be it the polar or uh, the, uh, uh, the, the heart rate variability measurement device like the camera HRV or the uh, heart rate variability for training applications in the, uh, the, the smartphone or Garmin, they all use the RMSSD. Okay, as a measure of uh, the heart rate variability. So you see that RMSSD, RMSSD, <coughs> RMSSD. Okay, now look into this uh, heart rate variability measurement. We need to know that there are two ways of uh, sensing. One is the ECG type, okay, which is uh, sensing the electric signal. And another one is the PPG type, which is based on uh, light-based technology, like uh, based on the uh, light shine at your body and, and uh, to, to, to take the, uh, the, the measurement. And up to now, we know that the ECG or the electric signal type of uh, sensing 
is more accurate than the PPG or the uh, the the the, the light-based type of sensing. Now, so we know that there's a ECG and there's a PPG, okay? Uh, we know that the uh, Polar Vantage V plus the Polar H10, this is a ECG type of uh, monitoring, okay? And uh, Polar H10, okay, this thing. Uh, the strap is a uh, ECG type, and for the uh, Garmin Verno Two S, it is a PPG type because it's based on the uh, the light technology. Okay, it's just based on the light based technology, you know, shining light, and also the uh, the smartphone applications such as the uh, heart rate variability for training and the camera heart rate variability which is uh, from the same <coughs> company this is also the PPG type so this is uh, ECG this is PPG this is PPG well we need to know this because uh, we know that ECG sensing is a uh, in general more accurate okay now also there's an issue with algorithm different devices from different company have different algorithm for the uh, ECG signal analysis and for uh, PPG signal analysis so uh, different devices will give you a different uh, or have a variations of the, uh, the the heart rate variability number okay so uh, there will be a RM SSD variation in different devices so they will not give you the same uh, number okay even though everybody is talking about the uh, the RM SSD that we need to know also now, uh, let's look into <coughs> the comparison of the IM SSD between different devices. So, uh, let's compare the Vantage V2 versus the uh, Camera HRV. Okay, this is the uh, smartphone applications, okay, as in uh, iPhone. And uh, you can see that uh, over here, it says 16 millisec, and here it said 23.6 millisec, okay? So you can see that uh, in the camera HRV, uh, the reading is actually 1.47 times higher than what you can see in the Polar Vantage V2. Okay, and we know that this is ECG, this is the PPG, okay? And of course, uh, price-wise, <coughs> this is uh, the, the setup of uh, this thing. It's about 500 something dollars, where uh, this camera heart rate variability you just pay for the, uh, the the apps, the applications, which is a few dollars, and it works with your, uh, your, your, your cell phone or your smartphone. So this is a, a very low-cost way, very affordable way for everybody to use for measure the, uh, the, the, the heart rate variability. However, one need to know, okay, so this will be higher than this, okay? Now, if you compare the Vantage 2V, <coughs> sorry, the Vantage V2 and Manu, uh, Vernal 2S, you can see that, again, this is the uh, ECG, this is the PPG, and uh, the uh, Vernal 2S 
from Garmin is measure 1.82 times higher than the Polar Vantage V2. <coughs> so as in here, this is 17 and this is reading 31. So the reason I mention this is because uh, we want to compare Apple with Apple, right? So whenever we uh, talk about the, uh, the, 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 the uh, heart rate variability measurement, we need also to, uh, to, to, to say, you know, to present what type of uh, device we are using. So also we cannot mix on this thing like uh, one day uh, you use the Polar and the next day you use the uh, Garmin and then you look at it and say, oh, you know, I, I'm improved so much because now with the Garmin, I got the 31 and then uh, this I get 17. Okay, so so this day, is, yesterday I'm 17, today I'm 31. Well, that is not true. Uh, that number is just different based on different device okay and different company and uh, 17 is equivalent to the 31 so uh, if you use the polar vantage v2 you have 17 and you use the vernal 2s you have 31 okay they are the same type of states okay you are uh, you are in now, uh, if you compare the Verno 2S versus the camera HRV, you can see that the uh, Verno 2S is higher, 1.75 times higher than the camera HRV. Okay, where in the camera HRV you measure 25.1 and the uh, Verno 2S you measure 44. Millisecs, okay? So, uh, this is what I like to share with you. Okay, you know why it is uh, important to, uh, to, to measure the uh, HRV. And you know that uh, there are different devices today that uh, you can use to measure or monitor your HRV. And uh, it can be ranged from uh, really uh, high uh, cost. Okay, this is about five hundred something dollars. This is about three hundred something dollars, and this is about uh, under ten dollars or under twenty dollars with your smartphone. And uh, as you can see here, as soon as uh, you know. Their, uh, their, their ratio and you use uh, the same type of the device to measure your heart rate variability you will be able to track the improvement of your heart rate variability from your Qigong training or your state your physiological state whether you are in the tired state or you already recovery okay so this is uh, what I'd like to share with you today. Hopefully that more and more people is using this heart rate variability measurement for their Kung Fu and Qi Gong training uh, because uh, that is a must. We cannot simply uh, making claims in uh, Qi Gong training or how good we can recover and uh, not also, not knowing that our uh, present uh, physiological state on what we need to train or what we must not touch. So, uh, this is for you today.